This is bags of notebooks I've collected throughout my life. When I was growing up, like I would either write just poetry or just random raps that I would use to like battle against another kid at school or something like that. Like now, I have the means to actually have quality production and like my studio upstairs, you know, I can compose and I have an idea of, of what I want to do. But like now I write with a different intention is to make a quality song. Whereas before I was just kind of babbling. I think this is high school stuff. I used to do like, I guess what this would be rhyme practicing. I don't know how to explain this. So like I would have like a, a, a word at the top and I would have to make a rhyme by it. So the top of this is fuel. I use the mic as a tool. Using whack raps as fuel or motivation for school. <laughs> That's pretty dope though as far as like the, the writing is terrible, but it's like not even knowing what I was doing, but like just practicing, not knowing that I was practicing. You know what I mean? Yeah, see, just like, since I was a, a low one, man, just pages and pages of this shit. Just notebook upon notebook upon notebook. That's why I told you I put in my uh, 10,000 hours, man. You can see them. It can see on by the masses. Weak rappers need glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious, man. This is really bad. The beats I was making, the music was terrible. But uh, it, didn't just, it just took me away. So I used to just get away, man. It was just fun. And then I fell even more in love with it. And that's when the process kind of changed of our writing. Not really writing just to write. You're actually writing to, uh, there, was a, there was a goal. You know, I had structure now. Over time, the quality's got better. So your whole intention changes of why you're writing. Now it's writing to make a song to convey an emotion that I'm feeling rather than just getting my thoughts down. Whereas before I didn't have that. And now that I do, it's, um, it's way more fulfilling to me. That and when I showed people this, they were like, yeah, all right, man. And but when I show people my songs now, they're like, holy shit, I understand how you're feeling. So when you like listen to Wine Bottles and Cheese, it's kind of, um, it was how I was feeling at the time. Like you reach this certain, you know, social status, whether it be monetarily or fame. And when you're coming from where I'm coming from, you kind of get this, this sense of accomplishment and this sense of uh, fulfillment. And that's kind of what Wine Bottles and Cheese is about. It's this like stamp of approval of the thing that you sacrificed has all come to this point where you're able to enjoy. Uh, a nice glass of, of wine with some cheeses that you probably can't pronounce. <laughs> That's the emotion that I wanted to, co to convey. I had an idea in my head of like sitting in Venice and, and you're on vacation out in the summer and there's a breeze going by and you're listening to that jazz song and somebody's telling you in your ear, like, yo, we have arrived. I opened the song with, um, Wine bottles and cheese, it's so fancy and grease. My aviator's a beast, my bank filling with yeast. My dog told me he down, I got him back on his feet. He asked how much was enough. I said a hundred at least. And so, I mean, basically, I mean, it's kind of, some of this kind of self-explanatory, but he said, my, avi my aviator's a beast and I have like a, a dope pilot. <laughs> uh, my bank filling with yeast, yeast, yeast expands. Uh, and, and it's also a, uh, a, a term for, for bread. Bread is a term for money. Um, and I go on to explain, uh, I say, uh, I kind of thought I was pleased. My life, you know I say, I kind of thought I was pleased. This life shit was a breeze until I see my brother holding my niece. Then it was right back at it, like an addict that's addicted to crack. You ever seen someone addicted to that? And I kind of get into politics a little bit. I said, um, I wrote a letter to the mayor because the big dog busy with guns and penny pushing the funds. I said the ghetto was numb, and you can fix where you from, long as you are willing to split crumbs and then stop neglecting the young. He goes, my father is art and my mother is heart, and when it's real, you can't tell them apart. So I don't, anyway, uh, <laughs> is that good? This, it's, just, it's the last song. <clears throat> uh, 
of the uh, of the album. And it's called Suicide Note. Um, and like to me, this is like some of my best writing, uh, just because it's like it's just honest, it's raw. It's a very cynical view of the world that I have experienced. So this is kind of like uh, kind of my letter to everybody. Kind of talks about that inner struggle about like loving where you come from and loving the inner city and the people of the inner city, but you now live in the suburbs because you've obtained this level of success, right? So it goes up. Uh, but here we are in the thick of it, sitting in a predicament where I love the hood, but the burbs is magnificent. Looking at Uncle Tommy and trying to show him the differences, trying to show him the love of people that love the blemishes. I remember I was a kid, it was so simple, and trying to get on the list, praying to St. Nicholas, trying to pinpoint the moment I lost my innocence, my first woman, my first stimulant. The vividness of it all is trickling down the walls of my memory. Now the feeling's like an accessory. Painting pictures with words was therapeutic at first. Now I'm dependent on this beautiful curse. That's one of my favorite lines of the album, actually. Because <clears throat> it's like, as you see, I've been writing since I was a kid, man. And like, what I've found is when I'm not writing, like my world is collapsing. Like, I'm pretty sure everybody has that something that, 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 I, that they identify with and mine is writing. And so it's like, yeah, I, I can feel, um, my life literally crumbling when I don't write. New York, I mean, it's the mecca of, of hip hop. It's, it's where it started, in the South Bronx. I mean, every time I go there, I get inspired because it's, uh, it's like a busy city and everybody's, everybody's always doing something and you kind of have to be of that mindset when you go there. And it's, uh, I always get excited when I go, I love New York. We're trying to uh, just play the, play the album for some people, listen to session with some musical media, who have some influence uh, that can get some positive push for us, um, or just push period for us when we're uh, when we release. And so um, it's going to be an intimate setting, probably like 20, 25 people there, um, and we're just going to play the whole album for them, get thoughts, feedback, and uh, you know hopefully they enjoy it.